So our discipline of music theory falls into uh, five subdisciplines, five traditional subdisciplines. First is, uh, of course, ear training. Ear training. That's what I, I, I was talking about. Ear training. You have to train your ear. It takes years, years. Um, pretty much all the years of study before you enter the conservatory or university. In German it's called Tonsatz, in um, French it's called Écriture, simply like writing, writing. In Russian it's called Vospitanie Slucha, training of ear. Very good term, term, really, we have to train our ear. After we have trained our ear enough, well enough, we can move on to study of harmony. It's a discipline, it's called harmony. Um, I'll, um, I have prepared a separate lecture on what is harmony, how to study harmony, what is harmony as a discipline, and what is the object of study. Um, after uh, a student has acquired some knowledge of harmony, it's time to go on to uh, polyphony. I call this discipline polyphony. Uh, another name is counterpoint. Counterpoint is a very technical term. I prefer polyphony because it's more universal, it's applicable, it's applicable to any music which has more than one voice. Ultimately, we come to the level at which we can start learning form. In the 19th century, it's called form. Uh, well, in, in, in the 18th century, it was called form and lehr, the teaching of form. In the 19th century, uh, uh, theorists such as Adorn Bernard Marx or Hugo Riemann Marx, Riemann I've defined it differently. They started calling it Compositionslehre. And uh, thus, um, ear training, harmony, polyphony, form, and instrumentation, these five disciplines, have become uh, a single uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, which was called theory of composition. Um, it, it, is, it is very useful. Uh, we, uh, we're using s s some of the elements of theory of composition and I wish we could we could re we should re that we could restore uh, the theory of composition as it was taught in the 19th century because it, it, it offers the knowledge of musical work in its, in, in, in its complexity, in unity, and no, nothing is left off. You can study all the aspects of music and you come out well prepared for musical profession. In the 19th century, in the second half, uh, Hugo Riemann and Guido Adler um, added few disciplines since they were, they were trying to move um, the curriculum of music theory from conservatory to university. That was a significant step. Uh, by the way, it's, it's quite controversial. On the one hand, uh, the university offers uh, it's, 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 it's simply a better environment to study anything than a traditional uh, conservatory, which was a vocational school. Project. On the other hand, uh, it's very easy to lose some practical, pragmatic aspect of the study of music, uh, some skills. And, and that's, a, that's a dangerous move. Now. It's still, still, still uh, in working. So, uh, in order to become uh, a university, subject. Uh, music theory has acquired uh, some other sub-disciplines such as aesthetics, musical aesthetics, musical acoustics, musical psychology. Later on, in the 20th century, we have added uh, cognitive musicology and so many other, so many in other inter interdisciplinary fields. And now we, we have this uh, field. Oh yeah, and I have got um, in, in Europe, in Soviet Union, in Germany and France in the middle of the 20th century, um, they also were working on uh, analysis of a musical work. And on analysis as such, methodology of analysis. For example, European Music Analysis Congress. This is the organization of which, which I'm part of, uh, still, still dealing with this topic, music analysis. Soviet musicologists such as Mazil, Sukarman, Olobova, Medushevsky, these are great teachers of 
music analysis in the Soviet Union um, have done a great, great job. It all needs to be translated into English. Though. And um, Karl Dahlhaus and his school, Music Wissenschaft, it's pretty much the discussion of what is musical analysis and analysis of a musical work. Not form. Form is 19th century, but 20th century analysis of musical work as a whole. And uh, there were so many, uh, there are so many interesting developments in France and in other countries in this area. So this is what music theory is all about. Music theory allows to understand music. What did what did they, what did they say? I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm trembling because nobody can understand music. It's non-verbal. It's not given. On the other hand, music can express many things. It's, it's very powerful too. It, it expresses things which cannot be expressed in words. Therefore, for us to develop our human aspect, to develop our humanitarian knowledge, we need to analyze music. Music resists verbalization, but it's our destiny. We have to verbalize things. It's, it's, it's very human to, to name things, to apply words. Well, uh, in, in some in major texts, religious texts of the past, it is stated that, and the Hehen Holobos, for example, the word is in the beginning of everything. So we should not underestimate the power and significance of word. But theorists, well, what, what, that's what, what, what we do. We apply word to music. And it's very difficult to overestimate the significance of this. Significance within the musical profession and significance for, for everybody, not necessarily musicians. It's a very good thing to understand music. And I, I don't want to promote my profession here, but I can say that uh, it's, it's a good advice for parents uh, to think about, uh, and, and, and children to think about choosing this very well established, thorough, solid academic very academic trade. It's a profession. Thank you very much.